Did you know mice are the main non-human models used for diabetes research today? Well, it's true, and I'm thankful for their contributions as they've helped advance diabetes treatment and positively impacted my grandmother's life. First, the basics. Diabetes, also known as diabetes mellitus, is a severe medical condition that occurs when the glucose level in your bloodstream exceeds the healthy limit. This occurs when your body can't transport glucose to your cells because of insufficient insulin production or the insulin production being destroyed within your body. This diagram above illustrates the normal functioning of insulin in allowing sugar out from the bloodstream into the body cells to provide energy. And then this diagram below illustrates what takes place within your bloodstream when diabetes is prevalent and shows how without the insulin needed, the sugar remains in your bloodstream. My grandmother pictured to the left has diabetes. She was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at the age of 14 and has had it ever since. Having type 1 diabetes has greatly affected her life by causing her to have to monitor her glucose levels closely after each meal and regularly go to diabetic doctors to monitor her symptoms. However, thankfully, due to the advancement of research in the disease, largely due to mouse research, treatment and management of the disease is getting easier. One way this treatment has gotten easier for my grandmother is she no longer has to monitor her glucose levels um, by pricking her finger after each meal, but she can now monitor them for the majority of the time electronically. There are two types of diabetes, type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes, but for this we'll be focusing on type 1 diabetes. This is the form of diabetes my grandmother has. Type 1 diabetes occurs due to the immune system destroying insulin created, mistaking it for something harmful to the body. Type 1 diabetes is also much less manageable than type 2 diabetes, and all those with type 1 diabetes must take insulin in regularly. It's also too important to note type 1 diabetes isn't a result of lifestyle choices. One mouse case study that has greatly impacted our knowledge of diabetes today and the potential ways to cure the disease is a case study conducted by Cloud State University scientists in 2016. They invested the effects of polychlorinated bifills 153 or PCB 153, a persistent organic pollutant, on non obese diabetic or nod mice to find out how it affected the progression of the disease. Nod mice were selected for use in this study because of their close resemblance to human type 1 diabetes. This overall study used the results of two separate different mice experiments in order to test the effect of PCB 153 on type 1 diabetes progression. These studies were conducted by placing female nod mice in random groups to be injected biweekly with 0.125 or 12.5 milligrams of PCB-153 or a DMSO vehicle control for a total of 16 weeks. The male nod mice control group was placed randomly in groups to be injected with PCB-153 every other day with 0.5 or 50 milligrams for a total of 10 days. Then after the mice's treatment, they were examined to find how the development of the disease progressed. The findings. After examining the male and female nod mice after the experiments, the findings were, as shown in the graph below, that 28% of male mice were diabetes-free after the injections. However, in contrast, female mice who had longer exposure to both higher and lower doses of PCB-153 were 67% and 48% diabetes-free. These findings are very significant because they provide us with insight into how to potentially cure or reduce the development of type 1 diabetes. In conclusion, diabetes is a very serious condition that comes with many significant risks and complications. However, thanks to mouse research, the future for those with diabetes is looking brighter due to many important strides in the discoveries about the disease that could potentially lead to future cures.